everybody, how's it going? Um, I'm coming at you from GitCon in Mirchi Kitchen. Mark New Kitchen. Mark New Kitchen. Kitchen. Yeah, Germany. Yeah, somewhere in Germany. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 like right almost on the Czech border here. We're very 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 east end of Germany, and we're at Framus and Warwick, and uh, hanging out at GitCon. And you guys have asked for it, so I've got it here. Here's Colin. Hello, guys. From, Colin here from CS Guitars. What's your last name, Colin? Scott. Colin Scott. From Scotland, no less. Mm. And uh, name. yes, easy to remember. Now you guys know Colin. He did that video, how to not dial in a metal tone, yeah. where it was what all the games, all the game, all the no game, mids. no mids, Slayer. Yeah, okay, exactly. But Slayer is all mids. Slayer is all mids. But the the joke there was that the attitude people have when uh, they have that all the game attitude, they're like, oh yeah, Slayer's the best metal band ever. Okay, and that's, I, that was more the joke. I remember seeing a guy do, demoing like a Line Six pod, and he's like, yeah, so. And he, that's what he did, did, just full game, all mids, all trouble, no, no, or all bass, all trouble, no mids. No mids yeah. And he's like, this is how to get the exact sound of Metallica Black Album guitar. Mm. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, right. so a bunch of you guys have been asking, hey, Glenn, how do I adjust my neck? And well, I thought I'd get the technical guy in here to answer a few questions. Technical guy. There are a few reasons why you might want to adjust uh, your neck. Uh, first one would be if you're changing your strings. If you're going to a different gauge of strings, particularly heavier gauge of strings, right. uh, heavier gauge of strings add more tension uh, to the neck when you've got them up to pitch. And it'll pull. Pull. So your woods aren't going to say structurally in a straight line. The strings are going to pull them forward. The neck's going to bend. So the truss rod within the neck is useful for adjusting that back the way to counteract the tension pull of the strings. Give you. More of, a, more, more of what you had before you changed up to a higher gauge of string. Right. The other, other one you might do is if you're just changing the tuning, you're not changing the strings, but changing the tuning. If you're down tuning or up tuning, um, you're again changing the tension of the strings, so you'll need to adjust the truss rod and the neck to accommodate. And the third and possibly main reason would be uh, climate changes, environmental changes. Like I was saying, if you're like say an Arizona based band and you go to an English tour, you're probably going to need to adjust your necks. You'll need I, to set up when you get to a new place, especially if the humidity is vastly different. Yeah, I had an issue with one of my guitars where it was still really new and I hadn't played it in a couple months and because you know I got the guitar in winter, wanted to play it in the summer and the neck had just like pulled like this and mm. the strings were way off the fretboard so you know we had to crank it down. Now I, I want to stress though, okay, if you're adjusting Adjusting your neck, first thing you do, the truss rod is for your zero fret to your twelfth fret. So from, from the zero fret yeah. to the twelfth fret. Okay, fantastic. Now, if you need to adjust the action above the twelfth, that's why you want to use these guys up here. Yeah, the truss rod has very little impact on this point, because at this point, you're mostly in contact with the body, depending on the model of guitar. Right, exactly. So uh, you're getting very little change here when you're adjusting the truss rod. Okay. Now, the string height from the frets, that's what's called relief. And, you know, there's supposed to be, you know, a uh, mathematical re reading of, of what you're supposed to get, but I just kind of do it by sight and feel. Yeah, I, I feel that when you're playing guitar, it's about how it feels under your fingers. So everything like action, relief, and all that stuff comes down to how it feels for you as a player, rather than going, oh, I need to be exactly this amount of millimeters from the fretboard. I think that's, um, I think that's missing the point somewhat. Okay, and it's very important to remember, you know, you don't need a completely straight neck. You no. want a little bit of bow in there, just because, the, so that way your strings are just slightly higher than the fret yeah. they're behind. It allows them to vibrate without buzzing. All that fret buzz, yeah. yeah okay. A dead straight neck. Okay, can we get a close up on the headstock here? Uh, so, what we got here is uh, the Ibanez um, Iron Ladle. Iron, iron Ladle. <laughs> the Iron, yes. The Iron Ladle. And, uh, okay, why don't you show them what's really cool about this Ibanez? Really the cool thing about Ibanez is their truss rod covers up here slide. Close up, damn it! <laughs> Give them the close up. Jesus Christ, fucking amateurs here. Working with monkeys. I can't even get in here to this. Actually. This is highly embarrassing. But yes, no, that slides <laughs> open. <laughs> yes, it is, buddy! <laughs> the truss rod cover slides open in the Ibanez, so you don't have to unscrew it like you've done pretty much every other Every guitar. other guitar, yeah. and that's amazing. And um, yeah, that, that's what I love about, about the Ibanez guitars, is it's, if you have to do a quick neck adjustment, it's not an issue. You don't have to break out the screwdrivers or lose the screws. Yeah. Yeah. They just got the little, little door. tiny, that, tiny screws. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you can that's what she said. <laughs> and um, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, you take those tiny little screws out, and if you're playing a gig and it's dark and they just go missing, you're fucked. And then you're busy worrying about your loose screws instead of the show you got to play. Yeah. So um, Ibanez provided us with. Can I get a close up here on this shot? Is uh, yeah, this uh, they gave us this really fucking cool multi tool actually. And um, what it is is it's got 
you know, it's got Allen keys and it's got the uh, the Gibson style truss rod adjuster and this will work on my Jackson as well, which is really cool. It's got like some feeler gauges and what are really cool, and this is, this is what's great. It's got, you know, screwdrivers, pretty much everything you need to work on your guitar. But I, what I really like for, for truss rod adjustments is this. And if you can see, this isn't actually a 90 degree angle. This is just slightly off 90. It makes it easier to get into that neck. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at that. Into that, that neck cavity. And explain to the guys what, what we're going to do here. Okay, if we want the neck to bow a little bit, we're going to take it back a little yeah. bit, right? So go ahead. Can I take it back? Yeah, take it back take a little bit. Take it back, but only small amounts at a time. Yeah, you, I usually go a quarter turn at yeah. a time and let the, let the wood adjust because you're yeah. not going to get an immediate reaction. You, you want to go small amounts whenever you're doing any sort of maintenance on guitar. You, if you do too much at one go, you may end up breaking something. You don't want to break a truss rod inside the neck. That's a hell of a replacement. To Ooh, go. I've never done that. I've, yeah. I, honestly, I stripped one out and I, I, it will still work, kind yeah. of. But yeah, when you're learning how to adjust uh, your truss rod, it's very important to do it on a beater guitar, yeah, <laughs> not on your best yeah. guitar. If I just want to, um, if I want to lower the action, just pull this back this way a bit, and if I want to raise it up a little bit, give me a little bit more bow, we can just loosen it off, like so. And it's just like I said, quarter crank. So normally, yeah, you you uh, take string uh, three and four out, like lay, loosen those off. Yeah, just pull them out and off. And just gives you a little bit more room to, to maneuver. But the Ibanez makes it really easy to get to, so we figured just for demonstration demonstration purposes, yeah, this works. Just kind of explain that to you guys. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, a um, you know you might want to take it to a tech or work on a beater guitar. But like a high end guitar, you know, like the Iron Label. Now you gotta be saying no, Iron say Label. Like yes, yes, like the Iron Label here. You might want to um, you might want to. Take it to a pro. Yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, don't mess about it with yeah, the exactly. high end instruments. But if you are going to do something quarter crank instruments, why don't you show them uh, what this thing can do? Oh. If it's still in tune. If it's still in tune, we've not yeah. totally out of tune by doing that. Yeah, so um, just so you guys know, we got the rev generator, yep. what is that, the 100? That's no, the 120. 120. Awesome, my, my particular favorite amp. And we got uh, one of the coffee custom cabs, two by 12s. Coffee cabs are absolutely freaking amazing. Um, I've got a demo coming up on them on my show real soon as well. But I'd like to thank Colin for being on the show, man. Been wanting to do this one for quite yeah. a while. Um, if you haven't checked out Colin's channel, what's your channel name? CS Guitars. Yeah, check if you haven't seen it, check out his How to Not Dial in a Metal Tone video. It's yeah. freaking awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is the first of many videos to come from GitCon. So I will see you guys uh, in a little while. Take care. Na 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 na.